All right, so then next, we're going to get into the next topic. So that was just a little quick high-level overview on dashboards. Now we're going to want to get into um, setting up analytics and pivot tables within NetSuite. Um, so really in NetSuite, the way it works is it's usually grouped into workbooks and data sets. So a data set is kind of like a safe search in NetSuite where you pick a topic area, whether it's a transaction, customers, you know, what's your data source of your data? And then you create a workbook, which would be similar to like an Excel workbook. And once you have a workbook that's linked to the data, you can now start doing pivot tables, pivot charts, things of that nature. So what's going to follow if we were going off the deck, which I'm going to uh, do, is literally now the step-by-step -step instructions of how to set up what we're gonna cover today. But to make this a little bit more meaningful and interactive, I'm gonna actually bring up NetSuite and we're gonna start building this stuff together. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a simple example of building a pivot table within NetSuite. So the use case we're gonna use here today, we're gonna to create a sales by class pivot table. Okay, so to do that, we'll start out by going to analytics. And then we'll wanna create a data set. So this is where we're saying we have workbooks and we have data sets. So let's go to data sets. And then we will create a new data set here. Look at all these topics of data sets that you can pull source data from, right? Um, probably the most common, if you're looking at transactions, want to see financial information, that's where we're going to go to a transaction data set. So scroll down to the T's. And here's a transaction data set. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then we'll want to save this, save our work, right? Let's create a data set that we can save our work. So if we go click the save button, we can go ahead and name this. And obviously guys, if you have your NetSuite up, it might be easy just kind of follow along um, if you haven't already. He's not gonna go through extreme detail because we got a lot of stuff to go through. But then at the very end, like I said, put your questions in the Q&A and then uh, we'll definitely try and come back to as many as we can. Got it. So you can see we have a data set started here. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna add some filters to this data set. If we're trying to get revenue or income by class, then we can filter this data down to just income data, right? So the way we can do that is if we go into the, the, the your folders listed off here to the left. So you kinda have to navigate into the folders that we want. So. We go into transaction, transaction line, blow this out, transaction accounting line, blow this out a little bit more, and then account. So we're looking at the transaction accounting line and then within the account folder, we can grab the type. So which type of account is it? And then it brings up a pop-up and we can specify, we wanna look at income accounts. Hit apply. And now we're filtering our data down to just income, right? Next, next important thing to look at is under the transaction folder, we want to make sure we're looking at only posting transactions. There's tra transactions in NetSuite like sales orders, estimates. Those don't post to the general ledger. So we want to look at stuff that's going to tie back to our income statement and, you know, and it is actually going to be on the general ledger. So we want to make sure we're looking for posting transactions only. So if we scroll down here, we can find posting, put that up in the filter, yes, apply. So now we, and then let's save, a, it's recommended to save as you go. You don't wanna lose your work um, as you're going. So we've added two filters, one that it's posting, two that it's uh, the account type or income type accounts. And then next, we wanna make sure that we have enough fields, uh, the, the columns and fields that we want for our report later that we're gonna build. So typically you want date, which is already in here. We'll want to add subsidiary. So if we go back to the transaction line here, here's subsidiary, we'll just drag that over. Okay. Then next we'll want class. So class is right here, drag that over. 
So you start seeing your data come to life as you're, as you're pulling it together. And then we want to go back into the transaction accounting line and we want to bring over the account as well as the amount. Okay. And I'm going to save that. <clears throat> One other helpful thing to note, so as you get more time in here with these data sets and things, sometimes you'll be like, which folder was this field in? I, I know I have it, I can see it right here. If you click the three dots, you can hit show location and field list, and it'll actually show you where it, it highlights in blue, it's coming right here from account, you know, and it's in this folder. So that's just another helpful trick as you're working and building out your data sets. So next, we're going to add a formula. Okay. So if you click on your formulas section up here, then you see a button for new formula. The reason we want to add a formula here is the amount uh, field is normally in its native accounting uh, symbol. So, um, so like revenue is a credit, so it's showing as negative. Well, for our reports, we want it, want it to be positive. So we're just gonna add a simple formula to change the amounts from negative to positive. So if I hit new formula, we're gonna change this to float. And then we can still just call this amount. And we are going to take the transaction accounting line amount field, double click on that to insert it up here. And we're just gonna put a negative sign in front of it to just change the sign, right? Hit validate to make sure that the formula is good. It gives you a green checkbox and save. So just like that, we now created our own formula field. We can drag that over into our data set. And you see here, instead of being a negative in its native symbol, now it's changed to a positive here. So you can kind of see that that looks to be working as expected. Okay, and then next we are going to actually, we can now create our, uh, our pivot table, right? We have all the data we want. We have date, we have subsidiary, we have uh, class, which is ultimately what we're trying to pivot by. So to create a pivot table, we can hit create new workbook here on the data set. Gives you some options, right? Do you want a table? Do you want a pivot table? Do you want a chart? We're gonna do a pivot table for now. And then after this, I'm gonna show us how to do a chart. So click on pivot table, and then you have to start dragging some of your data into your pivot um, so that you can actually see the results and save this workbook and this pivot table. So the beauty is for, for those of us, I know it's a lot of, a lot of accountants, CFOs, people with an accounting background on this call. If you're familiar with doing pivot tables in Excel, it's very similar. You have your rows, you have your columns, you have your measures, you're just dragging stuff into the right you know, rows, columns, measures to, to produce your pivot table. So um, if you do have that background and experience, it's very similar. So what we're gonna add is we'll add our account over into our rows. Then we can add entity as well. And then for our columns, we'll go ahead and add class. And then for our measures, we wanna add our custom amount field that we just created, not the native one, so that we can see our income as a positive value. You know which one's the custom one because it has this little FX symbol here. So that's the one I'm gonna grab and drop that in the measures. And then when we hit save, we can now name this. and hit save. So you have to also hit refresh from time to time on these workbooks to pull the data. So that's this little refresh icon right here. It's gonna go get the results. And now you see this starting to pull data, right? We have our income by account, by entity, and which class. So we can clean this up a little bit. Um, Next step would be we can add some subtotals because it's obviously would be helpful to see totals. So you also start to have the expand and collapse functionality of a pivot table, which is nice. Um, to put some subtotals, we hit the little sum icon here and you can hit at the bottom. 
put the subtotals at the bottom, and then it will go ahead and put that in there. So now you see we have some totals here. And then similarly, if we want to add a total for our column so we can see what's the total going across this way on the column, we can click on our what's in our column, which is class, and then we can add show grand total. So now I got totals on my columns, I got totals on my rows. This is starting to look like something I can use and, and be helpful, right? So we'll go ahead and save that. Now, some additional cleanup stuff that we can do here, right? Maybe you don't want it saying amount sum, not very you know, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, you can rename these columns and fields and stuff too. So if we wanna rename this, you hit uh, the three little dots, you have a rename option here. We can change it to just the amount, hit okay. And then if we refresh it, now it's saying amount, right? It doesn't say amount sum. So just little cleanup stuff that we can do to get our report dialed in. Next, we're gonna add a filter because without any date parameter or filter, this is just pulling all income for, you know, but really you wanna maybe tie it back to a particular date range or period. That's when we can add filters to our pivot table. So we're gonna go to the date field here, select the three dots, filter date, I like to go to advanced. Another great feature here is they have these quick selectors. So if you go to date ranges, you can actually say, I want to go to the year selector. And now here's all kinds of pre-canned year date parameters that you can just quickly select from to make it faster and easier. So we're going to look at this year to date, hit apply. And now you can see the data once we refresh is going to be now pulling income by class for just this year to date. And you see that here up in your filter region. Okay. So that's pretty much how to create a simple pivot table as an example.